<clears throat> Hello YouTube. Um, how you doing? Are you calm? Calm. Because um, you need to be calm, especially if you're going to watch this. Because I'm going to remain calm with the camera on, and um, I'm not going to trim bits because it takes too long, and I haven't got software really. So, um, get into a calm state, calm, open-minded state, if you're going to watch this video, that's my recommendation, anyway. So, it's uh, August the 19th, or 18th, <laughs> oops, one of them, <laughs> Friday, and um, I'm going to do an update video, because... Yes, some new things I've learned and things are interesting. So, I thought an update was necessary and for my own good anyway to to get down what I've um, feel you know I've journeyed on and where where we're at. Um. We are past the worst on on a soul level, and that's what's important. It's it's the it's our eternal souls being prepared for life eternal, and the learning curves that had to be gone through in order to do that. So every single soul will have made mistakes, will have felt the error of their own mistakes. Every single soul will have had hurt done unto it from another soul. And that again is, is just so that it can be felt to be understood. So, we are past the worst. And what I've definitely felt is that all of our souls are in it together. You know, it's not, it's not a race, it's not a competition. Because the first will be last and the last will be first. So, the soul in the highest condition now will at one point get overtaken by all the other souls so that the soul that is in the lowest condition now will at that time be first. You see? So, and that doesn't mean that the first soul is going to degrade. It just means that the souls in the lowest condition now are going to accelerate so quickly once, once they've started to accept love as a thing to do and that it will always conquer, um, they're going to see such dramatic changes that that's going to give them an insight that other souls who've never been in such a low place will get. So therefore that when they use that insight later on they're going to learn much quicker, faster than everybody else. So we are all in it together. And we're all gonna we're all gonna be together going into the next stage. Well uh, we've always been together, that's it, it's just that some souls have still remained in an incarnate state. And um I certainly believe, or I wouldn't say I've had some any strong feelings on it, but that now we have had every single soul um, has now begun existence. And whether that happened seven years ago, 
I don't think so. Because I don't think we'd see such a, a large number of new babies being born that need a soul. And I don't see that there's enough souls in a condition in the spirit world to be able to incarnate into all those bodies. So if this is sounding confusing, um, imagine that God made 25 billion souls. And they're of course male and female, so that's 50 billion potential people. And that all the people who have lived in the last 6,000 years, once they died, went into the spirit world and have remained there. And that the first one to ever re reincarnate was Yeshua, in 1962 and since then more and more have been able to reincarnate so in 50 years then the number of souls able to reincarnate maybe in the millions maybe in the tens of millions um, possibly even 100 million but I don't think up to the numbers of like a billion. My personal feeling, that, like I say, I don't know 100% on this at the moment, but this is kind of what I'm trying to sort of make this big picture and see if the jigsaw all fits together. So, there will come a time when, you know, if I'm right, then the numbers of babies being born will will kind of drop quite significantly and what which what makes the Zika virus very interesting is that's certainly a way to put people off um, having a baby if they think there's a chance of having a shrunken head um, so that could happen it could be happening um, I mean I know of a baby about to be born and a baby who's just been born so for me that's all very sort of it, it wouldn't seem if God was going to destroy the earth if you know physically if it was going to get destroyed then then you'd kind of think that if that's a new soul you must have a bit more time to sort of you know, have an experience. So, I, so I've got to admit, you know, in terms of what God is going to do to the earth at the moment, I'm, you know, I'm waiting to be surprised. You know, I suppose I always knew it would be a surprise. It will always, God will always surprise. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I'm happy not knowing that. But knowing the feeling that we're on the up now and that love has, in a sense, starting to tip the scales in its favour. And once that happens, it's going to be a... Phew. Once that starts to go, you know, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be inevitable. It's going to go quick. <laughs> it's all going to get loving. And um, and the key to that is getting the truth out there. People, getting people believing the truth, believing there is a God. Which I'm going to leave you to think about, and see if you really believe there is a God. And and if not, why not? You know, just sort of really think. You know, come on, you. What does this say? What does your heart say about there being a God, a mother and father of your eternal soul?
say something about the uh, the sixth Christ in my opinion Francis of Assisi I was looking into when the Protestant church started and um, it seems to have emanate seems to have begun the first sort of date is 1130 which is 50 years before Saint Francis was born but it was in Italy and it was sort of a, a protest to the Pope that, you know. But the thing is that it then goes on to say that the group was then called the Franciscans. So obviously something from Francis. And it had been my feeling that Francis was most likely the instigator of a Protestant church because you know, you've got basically the main differences being argued is that the Protestants were saying, how can a priest absolve somebody of their sins? Only God can do that. Now, for someone to come out and say that, or a body, or, you know, they've got to be pretty, pretty brave and, um, you know, almost like a prophet themselves or pretty sort of good strong insights with God um, so I think that's that's very interesting that it was in Italy and it was before Francis was born if you like <clears throat> and there isn't really much on the history at all which is strange in a sense um, almost like they yeah, want to ignore it. And I think then later there was a bit of a sort of a, a softening of what the Protestant church stood for. It sort of perhaps, you know, accepted a bit more of what was already, you know, so strongly Catholic and everything. Um, yeah. But I still haven't, I haven't found any more evidence for why St. Francis might have invented English, the English language. But what I find interesting about the English language is there are words for things that seem sort of... <laughs> it seems to be designed to fit the purpose of spreading the truth about God and everything. It just it just seems to have some words that make a lot of sense. Um, I mean, why would this area here be called the temples? And when you make your body a temple of God, you're going to feel God here. Mother God. <laughs> Father God. Father God comes up here from there. Mother God down there. Beneath. And all around. I mean it's... So when I start feeling God, the first thing I feel now is here. But that wasn't the case before. I didn't have that before. So there are these things that can go on in your soul, you can become aware of them and develop them and 
because that's just the tip of your soul in the sense the the biggest part of your soul, the most powerful part is in your heart. But it kind of starts there, so awareness, and I say, usually, you know, how are you, God? And that that makes me try and feel how God is. And God's always calm, always great. But then I can start to feel God. And every now and then I'll want to feel God as strongly as I can possibly feel it, just to remind myself that this isn't a spirit. And spirits in my experience have never been able to do anything so intricate. So a spirit can give you a wash of nice feeling and it can come inside too, into the soul sort of thing. Or it can be nasty and attack and um, and it can come forward to you like here and what I first noticed when I first started meditating feeling God if I felt like I had any sort of weight on the bridge of my nose anything just like touching that was a spirit with me you know sort of overcloaking me in a sense and I've been since I've had God here, I've been able to clear them. And I've also been able to, if you like, stop anyone else coming in by having the feeling of God here. And that's also how I may have been a conduit to God for spirits who were willing to go with God. And what I would often say is when I felt something coming here, I would often say, you know, my will is that for you to go with God, just so we can be clear. And it's all, it's been different, and it didn't start till, I'd say, it's hard to remember now, but I think about a year ago, so August, September last year. Well, I think I've done a video, Conduit to God. It might have been a bit later than that. And it's pretty much stopped happening. There was one the other day but you know there was it was happening a lot and there were lots and it was different and I've met Lucifer as well and Lucifer tries to trick you into the belief that you're God he's God I'm God you know that's that's what Lucifer will do and um, so if you get and when he came it was like a light but like I'm seeing the light on the wall shining onto a wall with shadows of what might be there sort of thing. So the light is coming in a sense. You don't see the source of the light. Well, I didn't. That was how. So it's always different. And, and then it pretty much sort of kind of cut off. Partly with what, you know, it's partly me as well in the sense of what I'm prepared to believe. You know, when I'm prepared to believe, so some days things happen and you just have a thought and then it, it clicks, of course, you know, this is true and then the belief is strong and then the feelings are strong and, you know, and that lasts for a while and then you sort of think, you know, am I, am I doing anything? <laughs> or, or, you know, and then it wanes a bit, so... I'd say at the moment I'm in a mid, sort of normal. But all through this time my belief's been getting stronger and stronger. Um, it's stronger, it is stronger and stronger, but yeah, so there's to the point where, you know, if I had to wait another seven years, I'd wait another seven years. But I know from experience now, from previous times in my life, when I believed something and then I left it, and I left it alone, no, oh, that's not true, and but the, it comes back because the truth keeps marching on. That's a, song, a line from an Elvis Presley song. The truth keeps marching on, oh, yeah. 
the truth keeps marching on. <clears throat> um, gosh, start with St. Francis, got on to me. Um, <clears throat> so then, <laughs> excuse the tangent, so the sixth Christ St. Francis, uh, a very sort of, you know, did a lot of things but no credit whatsoever. Well, why don't we go on to the fifth Christ then, who died on the cross. Spent 2,000 years doing good works in the spirit world and then was the first to reincarnate in 1962. So how is he now with his new filter, his new body, which now isn't a Christ body as he had a Christ body in, when he was the fifth Christ. So now he's a normal geezer with all the um, genetically hereditary inflictions, if you like, that prevent the soul from, from being its true potential. So it's like we're all playing a part and you're playing the part of your generations before you, what they've done in the last six, seven thousand years and what that's making the baby born its genetics and it's showing and it's going to prove that if there's a, a baby being born into type of genetics that couldn't possibly feel God that was so if you like damaged by the generations beforehand that it and I don't know if that's possible, but if it is, that body will no longer continue to create bodies on this planet. If I'm to go and go by, I've been going on a journey that's let my feelings lead me. And they've brought me to the things I've been saying on camera. Like the green eyes being the mark of Cain. It being true that we've only been here 7,000 years. Um, blue eyes, mark of Lamech. Um, me being Enoch. And being no gay souls and feeling mother, father, God different ways then sorry I lost my point I feel like I'm making a sales pitch um, <laughs> the truth if I'm going to continue that journey where it's led me then what I felt the other day was that this is a new beginning. It was something interesting that happened. I've been mentioned before that I've been looking at this, these code searches, looking for codes in the Torah, and the leading one is this Glazerson guy, uh, a rabbi, and he's been showing these codes and he showed on the ninth of Av, ninth of Av, the third temple would be burnt. Now, in my understanding, um, Jesus as the fifth Christ was the, fir the first temple of God on this planet, his, his own body. And this kind of makes sense with David being the fourth Christ and God said, I'm not going to get you to build the temple. I'm going to get the one who comes after you. Now, it, 
it may say that, <laughs> it may say his son, but I feel the meaning was the one who comes after you. And, and that would have been, the next Christ would have been Jesus. Now another thing they, Jesus, I shouldn't say Jesus, because that is, in Latin that means Hail Zeus. And I think when the word Jesus is said, it actually means God. Because Zeus was the highest God, so like Odin in the Vikings was the highest God. If you think of a, of a culture that had many gods, they're most likely aspects of God. And that I would include with angels as well, especially the top angels. They're aspects of God, I would, that's what I think. So then we talk about the top God, they just know for sure, right, that is the one God, because they understand there is one God. And when they've made other gods, it's probably because God is so vast and so massive that there are things they could feel that they thought must be other gods, even though it's just one God. So. So, yes, don't like using the word Jesus. So, Yeshua then was the first temple. And Francis being the sixth Christ. So, each Christ was, was able to do more. So, the first Christ, Adam, you know, down there on his own, and Eve as well. And, and I do think maybe the, the female... I don't know about that yet, it's another subject, female, male thing, I've spoken about that anyway. But, um, yeah, so then Francis was the second temple, so yeah, sorry, Adam. So he, he was the first Christ and had no, not much choice, whatever he did was meant to be. And, in a sense, he tried to be like a god to everyone, and, and couldn't you know, and things degraded. But this, you know, is inevitable. It had to happen so that we could learn from our mistakes and feel the wrong thing to do and therefore know that it's in our benefit and know why it's good to do the right thing. Because it's better for us, it's better for everyone. But we had to do the wrong thing to know that. We had to get ourselves in a, a low state we were not loving life. But now, if we brought the truth, we would love life. We would know that the truth is beautiful, the truth is awesome. And it's happening, it is happening. So, like I say, we passed the worst, there's a new beginning, and this ninth of our thing. So therefore, I believe that, yes, I am the third temple. And last year, when I first had this here, and was able to do what I was doing, that was me having built the third temple for the, you know, for the first time in my adult life anyway. So, so on the 9th of our, well it wasn't the 9th of our, but the next night, I felt I was being attacked from uh, just about everyone who'd want to attack me. And... I did feel at sort of rock bottom and I had this dream where I was laid while well, I was gone and lay in a pasture and I saw all these wild animals and and then this woman came to me and said I'll give this to you to look after I, I like your colours <laughs> and I was like pretty because I was you know just about hanging in there. I was like, okay. And then the, on the same day when I got back here and, and I had a smoke for three weeks and I had a smoke and feeling my soul so strongly after not having smoke for three weeks and sort of thinking about what had happened in the night before in all those dreams and stuff and sort of trying to work them out and what's this telling me and stuff like that. And sort of got the feeling of about, you know, a phoenix from the flames. And that was a, a new beginning. 
and I did feel like I did feel like that. So he seemed to be he could be right, couldn't he? The the third temple was burned, but after it got burned, whew, back to life. And this was leading me to thinking about the elements, how fire can't touch your soul. And someone made a comment, it's like a baptism of fire, and they were trying to scare me. You know, they're like, they, they look at what I'm posting, they don't like it. Fair enough. But they don't want to confront me head on, which is a bit crazy. Um, so he was quoting some scripture that said you take this path and have a baptism of fire. Now he was trying to say it as if that's going to burn your soul. But fire can't touch your soul. And then it led me, you know, then the soul, you know, if you're feeling your soul and then you imagine you're underwater, well, you know, your soul's fine, you can still breathe. So it can't be touched by these things and then it, you know, it can't be affected by earthly things. I've, I've been learning that for a long time. That you need to let go of all earthly things when you're feeling your soul. But the air element, that's always been there. And like the few times when I've got mostly into feeling my soul, the only thing I notice about me is the feeling of the breath on my nostrils and my heartbeat, which is right in the middle at this time. It's not off to the right. When when you start feeling this, your heart soul sort of thing and it can get your heart to boom, 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 you are feeling it right in the center. And you just have to, you know, the first time is the hardest time, but this one a bit like what panic attacks were a bit like. But you got when it's a panic attack is because you've got fear. You've got fear because you've got things that aren't true in your belief system. When you when you get this truth and you can feel the truth and if you're able to start feeling your soul it will feel marvellous, feel beautiful, that's the difference. The truth feels good because the truth is good. The truth of our existence is awesome, it's perfect. It won't seem like that now for everybody and it hasn't felt like that in the past because we've been on a path of error. So we're now we need to realise we're on a path of error, turn around and be on the path of truth towards God. And that is happening. And it will happen. Because it's God's plan. And nothing would exist without God. It's not logical for anything to be here at all. God is outside of the universe. Science is now exasperated itself. That's not the right word I was looking for. Exhausted itself. Looking for more answers. And all they find is more questions. And this quantum computing shit is a load of bollocks because <laughs> there aren't parallel universes. This computer, this is what I've heard, the reason it can be so powerful is it's, it's going to try and use the power from parallel universes. <laughs> and the, the whole basis of how a computer works binary, it's either a one or a zero. They can have this computer that, well it doesn't have to be a one or it doesn't have to be a zero. So, 
I'm a bit puzzled to how it's going to work at all. Um, I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. Bollocks. There aren't parallel universes. As far as dimensions goes, and we are multi-dimensional beings. We exist on... We exist on, like, three dimensions. We've got this dimension, the physical dimension. We've got where we go when we sleep and we die. The spirit world, sleep world. That's another dimension. That's one more dimension. Um, although apparently they have different loving levels within that dimension, but that's that dimension. And then you've got the soul dimension, which I believe Yeshua, in some of the hidden scripts like the Mary Magdalene, referred to that as the third heaven, which makes sense. So. Because I think where you... Well, where you go when you sleep and you die is, is the same dimension. But there may be a different level into which when like spirits when they die they certainly hang around on earth for a bit but then they get this opportunity to to go through to face all your judgment and everything what you've done so many spirits choose not to because they don't want to face up to what they've done and they continue hanging around on the earth but in another dimension but even though they can be right here but they're in their spirit form so I suppose then they're on this dimension anyway there aren't parallel universes there aren't dimensions you know of me doing this but just with a green jumper on it's ridiculous ridiculous Science, you know, it, got, it makes me laugh, the, uh, what's that, the BBC documentaries, the guy, the guy who likes to find out all about space, <laughs> it sounds that was bad accent. <laughs> I can't do an impression of him, I'm, but he, like, talks about this, you know, there was one documentary where, you know, the, the answers to life. And, you, you know, you watch about three documentaries talking about camel spit, and then the answer is for you to decide. <laughs> exactly. They haven't got a clue. Science will not bring the answers. They will not. The answer is within. So, so by this soul being on the, the soul dimension, that is the dominant dimension. What happens in the soul will end up being made in the other dimensions. So that's the important one. And that's where we're getting better. And we're past the worst. And there's a new beginning on the soul dimension. And that dream I had, where the woman said, oh, I'm going to let you look after this. That, that was Mother God. When she was referring to the planet. <laughs> I think, I feel. That's my honest feeling. Not quite sure how that's going to work. I mean, in the dream at the time, I didn't think it was the whole of the earth. It was just a natural area. 
I was lying in Heath and there was a big bear that came, it was nice, and a big uh, elk, what do they call them, and <clears throat> moose. And some hedgehogs. But all I felt I really had to do then was to uh, sit there. But anyway, if that is the case or not. It's, um, I don't know. If I wasn't the one, I would certainly want the one to declare it, to to say it's there. <laughs> so I wrote a new song over there. Oh, this one's going to say about cooperation. The new way is love. No longer have competition between businesses in the same nation. Uh, so no... <laughs> no. Yeah, I can't remember what I wrote. <laughs> no longer have competition between businesses within the same nation. Or indeed, there may be a specific size, um, you know, an ideal size of nation that should remain, if you like, just making the best quality products that people want, that will last, for as cheap as possible, but quality, and make sure that your people have the right sort of wages to be able to afford the products you're making and make sure you're making products that your people want right um, that needs to happen yeah that's what I said and the well, population needs to be looked at absolutely they should have looked at it 50 years ago it, it needs to be looked at it need to start being self-sustainable you need to be able to be self-sustainable. And then, you know, if you've got a surplus, then trade. But it shouldn't be more complicated than that. What, what this society does is it, we're basically carrying way too many people than what we should. But because of the competition and drive, it, it forces people to to sort of overwork so that more can be done and it, you know it's sort of killing us, it's killing the planet I mean stress, stress must probably be the biggest killer that there is and you really don't want it but we need to start standing up for ourselves and our own our own health and everything else. There's this, it's a human right to feel healthy and good. And stress is stopping you from doing that. You should remove yourself from it. Don't, you know, by putting up with someone's bad behaviour, you're condoning that bad behaviour. And you don't need to. And we're going to live forever. So don't worry so much about the rest of your life. I mean, I spend no time at all thinking about my pension. None whatsoever. What is the point of that? Some people spend large parts of their life flogging themselves in order to look after their pension. It's like, you know, and by the time you get there, you're so fucked up, you can't enjoy it so seriously. Day by day, 
is how you need to be living. Take each day as it comes. Because there's always something new in there's something new every day for you. If you want it. So cooperation. Cooperation. You can't make a song out of cooperation. <laughs> it's a shit word for a song. But it's what we need to be doing. And if you look at nature, if you leave nature, you will find that nature is cooperating. It's not competition. Nature is all in one big cooperation. And I've done the experiments leaving my garden. It takes time. It takes time. Things like um, bindweed and crabgrass that will spread and its roots will attack other plants. Well, it's because those other plants shouldn't be there. Nature knows best. And if you leave them alone, they'll have done their job and they'll be gone. Two years, three years max. Um, brambles, bramble wheat, bramble is the thing, the thing to break through crappy clay soils that have accumulated because of basically nothing going on in the soil and even concrete. Bramble will get through it, start bringing up nutrients and then other things will start to grow. So it just needs to be left. And if you end up with just grass, you know, you will start to get some trees coming. But just grass is balanced soil. So then you can plant something there if you think it's the right place for it. So and when you get weeds and things like that, it's rebalancing the soil. And soil shouldn't be dug, it shouldn't be ploughed. The soil itself is alive, it should be left. And there'll be things going on under the ground as well. It just all needs to be left. And in a hundred years, you'll have like a Garden of Eden. You'll have a proper natural habitat. And the way we should eat is just as we go. Because their food will be provided if we let nature do its job. And we'll just pluck it exactly the time when it's ripe, exactly as ideal, full of enzymes, full of goodness. Mainly your parasites which are making you hungry, parasites that you carry through eating processed foods, processed meats especially. Those parasites is what's making you want to eat most of the time. And then you eat, but your digestion system isn't isn't moving, isn't cleaning out, which is what a digestive system is as well. It's the drain pipe for the body. If you need to get some minerals through you or whatever, you know, everything needs to be working. Food is it's like the number one massive addiction. And we're on a planet which is <laughs> <coughs> can only grow so much. So we have to lean, and you know, we've got the parasites, uh, pesticides problem. Pests, you know, well, when you grow a monotonous crop, you're going to get pests. Also, I believe it has to do with the Mark of Lamech and the blue eyed things, which is why they got sent up north in the first place is because they were fucking up the crops. Pests were coming. Now with the green eyes they just didn't things just didn't grow very well so you know they were disliked as well. Plus the Abel was trying to drive out many of the green eyes and that's probably why there aren't that many green eyes about. <laughs> Or well, they're a bit browny green, so they sort of merged with the brown eyes, but the blue eyes got sent up north. But only later for them to come down and uh, be all over the world now. So pesticides are needed. <laughs> Do 
truth is stranger than fiction. I tell you that people who are into um, you know fantasy worlds and stuff. This world, the truth of it, is better than any fantasy ever written. So you're just lucky you're hearing this now that everything's coming good. It's good to have been ignorant <laughs> for a long time. I would not really have wanted to be aware of all this a thousand years ago. Or two thousand years ago. Cooperation. Love begets love. Okay. Oh yeah. The air thing. So, what I realised is all our souls at the moment are connected to God and we are dependent on God and one of the physical demonstrations of this is when we breathe in we're receiving love from God whether we know it or accept it or not that is what happens every time you breathe in. So treat it nice. And yes, it can be polluted. And we can pollute it ourselves. Or defend from the pollution, perhaps. So you're feeling that love from God, you're getting that love from God every time you breathe in. Knowing will make it better. Knowing will make you treat it differently. you got to know your soul. And how do you know something with your soul? Well, you can pray for God to accept it into your soul. I've done that before. But just by thinking about it and taking it on, you know, not just for an hour, but day after day. Oh, brought my guitar. I've written a new song, which I've put up already. But the, hopefully I don't have to look at the words, because that's always annoying. So I'm going to play it for you. Oh yeah. Every face is very places we just leave a 
needs more practice. I need to get funkier on the guitar, but I can't sing it and play like, you know, it needs practice, needs practice. Right. Well, I did have a look actually for the name Hartley in the Bible codes. But to be honest, I think, you know, you're using English letters, it's not a Hebrew word at all. But it is there. It's in because they don't have an E in Israeli. So Hartley with an E does come up twice somehow. Exodus and Joshua. And Hartley with a Y comes up in Deuteronomy, Job, Isaiah, Jeremiah and Daniel. But I was look I got some free software and I tried it and it was just quite apparent that you definitely do need to know Hebrew. I mean, you can't think that, like, to think that that Hebrew Bible was written and that if you put all the letters, you know, get rid of the spaces and make lines and find words and <laughs> that it's true is one thing. But to think that then it gets translated into English and you can do the same thing, you know, that's definitely out, but most people don't do that. But yeah, it's just a bit. And then when these other people start using um, books that have been written by Jews, comments on the Bible, and they're called the Talmud or something, and there's sh sh shitloads of that. To think that that's also, you know, God's plan. But I don't think it. So I think if you stick to the Torah and you stick to the Hebrew, then maybe, but I, I still not so certain. I mean I think, you know, words with common letters are gonna come up a lot. Um you know, if you find enough of those you can probably make your own story. Uh but <laughs> And I haven't been, I wouldn't say I've been using that, definitely not, but that has seemed to sort of correspond well with a lot of what I've been doing, going through. Yeah, my belief is, you know, not in one of the really strong parts at the moment, like I said. Still have to wait and see. Always will have to wait and see. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, you know, be more sure. Faith is something you need. need everybody needs their own faith. You need to find your own faith. Talk to God. I don't think you need... I think when people say Jesus Christ, they're saying God. And, um... Yeah, it's still... <laughs> hardly anyone who knows the truth. It's frustrating, to be honest. That's... If everyone knew the truth, not like about me, but just about God. That would be the, that would be so different. Things would be awesome, and I, th I still think more and more people, people I actually speak to. I mean, a lot of them come right out and say, "I don't believe in God, bollocks." But when you just, you know, you just start a little conversation, and then you see them sort of, you know, people are open to it coming. <laughs> How often do I say that? I think, yeah, the other thing, I'm getting a bit bored of YouTube in a way. I'm just, you know, we're seeing the same old things, aren't we, again and again. Floods and... But become 
desensitized to it. It's like, well, I suppose until it happens to us. I don't know. I'm still, you know, God's plan is awesome. And I just want more people to know the truth. We could, uh, it is happening. So I don't know why I'm complaining about it. should be happy. Woohoo! Woohoo! So happy. <laughs> I think I've said enough. How long have we had? One hour and two minutes. Cooperation and let, no, let nature do its job. I'm going to go now. Bye.